Imagine this. 37 UK-linked businesses are under investigation for breaking Russian oil sanctions. Yet, no fines have been handed out. Yeah, you heard that right. Zero fines. Despite ongoing probes, companies suspected of flouting the rules still haven't faced any real consequences. I know you're wondering, how is that even possible? Well, let's dive right in because this story is a wild ride. First, let's rewind a bit. After Russia's invasion of Ukraine back in 2022, the UK, along with its Western allies, slapped some serious sanctions on Russia. These sanctions were aimed at crippling Russia's economy, cutting off funds for its war machine. And a big chunk of those sanctions? They focused on Russian oil, the lifeblood of the Russian economy. Oil exports are a huge part of Russia's income, and Western leaders knew that hitting them where it hurts could slow down their war efforts. But here's the thing. While sanctions were introduced, they weren't meant to completely halt Russian oil exports. Instead, a price cap was set at $60 per barrel. Sounds reasonable, right? The idea was that oil could still flow, but Russia wouldn't make massive profits from it. And here's where British businesses come into play. They are not allowed to help transport Russian oil that's sold above that $60 cap. The UK government made it pretty clear. If you're caught breaking this rule, you'll face the consequences. But here's where the real kicker comes in. Since these sanctions were introduced, investigations have been piling up. A total of 52 companies linked to the UK have been investigated for breaching the oil price cap since December 2022. Out of these, 37 investigations are still ongoing. So, why haven't we seen any fines or penalties so far? Why hasn't a single business been held accountable? Let's just say the situation is more complicated than it seems. Treasury officials say that the cases are incredibly complex, and they take time. They're pointing fingers at the legal intricacies, the layers of corporate structures, and the global nature of the oil trade. Basically, it's not as simple as catching someone red-handed with a barrel of overpriced oil. Maritime insurance firms are among the suspects, and tracking these violations across international waters and business networks is no easy feat. But here's the problem. While investigations drag on, critics are growing more frustrated by the day. Sir William Browder, a well-known critic of Russian President Vladimir Putin, didn't hold back. He called the whole situation an embarrassment. Can you blame him? After all, sanctions are only as effective as the enforcement behind them. And right now, the enforcement isn't looking all that strong. Sir William even went as far as to say that the UK is one of the most lax enforcers of these types of laws. He pointed out that when it comes to economic crimes or sanctions evasion, the UK just doesn't have the best track record for prosecutions. He thinks there's both a resource problem and a culture problem here. It's not just about having the manpower. It's about having the will to go after these companies aggressively. Let's be real. When no one's held accountable, it sends a message. You can get away with this. And this isn't just about a few companies breaking some rules. This is about funding a war. This is about businesses enabling Russia to keep making money off oil, which in turn fuels their invasion of Ukraine. The stakes couldn't be higher. Louis Wilson from the anti-corruption group Global Witness echoed these concerns. He was, in his own words, astonished that no fines have been issued so far. To him, the oil price cap looks like a paper tiger. It's there on paper, but in practice, it's not cracking down on the rule breakers. And the situation gets even murkier. Wilson claims that businesses have found ways to wriggle out of trouble by getting their hands on documents. Promises, really, that let them off the hook. He calls these documents voluntary bits of paper that are too easy to come by. If that's true, then companies are just signing papers saying they didn't really break the rules and that's enough to avoid penalties. It's like getting a get-out-of-jail-free card. What's even more troubling is that critics believe the UK government might be quietly dropping these cases. 
According to them, either businesses find the paperwork they need to avoid punishment, or the government decides not to push too hard. Why? Well, there's a theory that Western governments, including the UK, are worried about the ripple effect. If they enforce the sanctions too strictly, it could choke off the flow of Russian oil, driving up global oil prices. That's the last thing anyone wants right now, especially with energy prices already sky high in many parts of the world. Think about it. If oil prices spike, that affects everything. Energy bills go up, fuel prices rise, inflation surges. It's a nightmare scenario for any government. So enforcing these sanctions might have some serious consequences and no one wants to be the one to pull that trigger. But let's not forget what's at stake here. These sanctions were put in place for a reason, to stop Russia from profiting off its oil exports while waging war on Ukraine. If companies keep getting away with breaking the rules, the sanctions lose their bite. And if the UK government doesn't step up and enforce them, what message does that send to other countries? It's a slippery slope. Interestingly, Dame Harriet Baldwin, a Conservative Shadow Foreign Office Minister, has also chimed in. She pointed out that sanctions are supposed to shut down the financial pipelines funding Russia's war machine, yet despite the sanctions, Russian oil seems to be finding its way into the UK. She's been pushing for more action from the government and the oil sector itself. If UK companies are still bringing in oil with ties to Russia, even indirectly, then clearly more needs to be done. OFSI, the Office of Financial Sanctions Implementation, is the UK's enforcement arm when it comes to sanctions. They're the ones tasked with investigating breaches of the oil price cap and other financial sanctions. And here's something interesting. Earlier this year, they received an additional £50 million in funding to step up their enforcement efforts. So you'd think that by now we'd start seeing some serious action, right? But nope. So far, the results have been pretty underwhelming. In fact, OFSI recently issued its very first penalty related to Russia sanctions. And get this, it was a fine of just £15,000. Yeah, you heard that right. They fined a concierge company for having a sanctioned individual on their client list. Not exactly the massive crackdown we were all expecting. So it raises the question, if that's the kind of enforcement we're seeing, how long before we see any real consequences for the oil firms under investigation? Now, let's look at the bigger picture. The UK isn't the only one dealing with this issue. Countries across the West are all grappling with how to enforce sanctions without causing a global oil crisis. Critics argue that the US, for example, has been hesitant to enforce sanctions too harshly uh, because they're worried it'll backfire and lead to higher oil prices. The reality is that enforcing these sanctions is a delicate balancing act. But that's no excuse for letting companies off the hook. If the UK government really wants to send a message, it needs to step up its game. Because at the end of the day, if sanctions aren't enforced, they're just empty threats. And that's not going to stop Russia from profiting off its oil while continuing its aggression in Ukraine. So what happens next? That's the big question. Will the UK finally crack down on these businesses or will the investigations quietly fade away? Only time will tell.